Easter does not promise to solve all our problems, not by a long shot. Easter is about accepting every mess exactly as it is. What Easter says to every mess in our lives, no matter what it is, is God's not scared of that. Whatever you could put in the blank, God's not scared of that. That's not too big a problem for God. That's not overwhelming God. Yeah, we say, but, but what if Russia overtakes all of Europe? What if AI gets smarter than we are and, and turns against us? And we get into this sci-fi kind of war between humans and machines. What if my child gets wrapped up in drugs and ruins their life? God's not scared of that. That's not too big for God. Nothing is too big for God to handle. I often find myself wondering How do people with high-stakes kind of jobs manage the stress? Like if you're a brain surgeon and you've got three life-saving brain surgeries scheduled for one day and, and you don't sleep well the night before, you get a garbage night's sleep and your eyes are burning and the Visine doesn't do enough, what do you do? You're a pilot and you've got a transatlantic or trans-Pacific flight in the morning, and you get into a big fight with your spouse, and you're, you're a mess inside. What do you do? What if you're a captain of one of those huge cruise ships that's like bigger than a town, has thousands of people on it, and you're on the cruise, and all of a sudden a typhoon comes up where you are? What do you do? Some of these things feel like, what's God going to do with that? What could possibly come out of that? What if you were the captain of a big cargo ship with 4,700 tractor-trailer beds on it? I've been told that if you have one of these jobs, you have training for just about every situation. They put you through training for everything. They've thought about that. They know that you could be in a, in a, in a tight spot, no matter what your, your profession is. So they teach you, if you ever have a power outage on your cargo ship with 4,700 tractor trailers on it, here's what you can do. But even if you're just going nine miles an hour and you've dropped anchor and you've done everything, even if you've crossed your fingers and said your prayers and said, just, I hope we don't hit anything. I, I hope we don't don't bunk our heads. I hope nothing bad happens. I hope no containers fall off the ship. Just then, what do you do when you see the ship is heading right for the bridge? The two-mile-long bridge. And what do you do when it's unavoidable? And one second after impact, the whole bridge that took five years to build falls in one second. God's not scared of that. God's not like, wait a minute, God didn't get a call in heaven. How long was that bridge? Oh, well, I don't have a plan for that. I mean, I don't know what to do with that. God never says that. God never says, that's way too big for me. Easter never promised to help us avoid Good Friday. We know that if Jesus did not avoid Good Friday, there's no reason to think that we would avoid Good Friday. What Easter says is that there is nothing beyond God's ability to turn into glory. Humans don't have that ability. We do our best. But the thing that we generally do when we face a problem is form a committee and try to come up with a plan. And that's very noble. It's a noble way to be human. And and there are certain things that can get solved that way. But there's no divine power in that. I always admire people 
who get involved in local politics. I know we've got quite a few people in our parish that are involved in local politics, trying to make Glens Falls a better community, Warren County a more welcoming place, and on and on. And, and I think all of us have a responsibility in a democracy to get involved. But, but you don't really believe, do you, that if your preferred party got into office, they would have the answers to make everything right. You don't believe that, do you? Or, I don't think any of us believe that anymore, do we? To believe that if my candidate gets in, then we'll get things straightened out. If my party, you don't believe that politics is the answer to these problems we're talking about. I don't think any of us believe that anymore. If, if politics had divine power, maybe. But politics is a human response to problems, not a divine response. It's noble to get involved, but to make a religion out of it? No. That's a recipe for despair. Politics is not going to be the way out. Not by a long shot. God is not scared of the problems that politics is trying to solve. And God is never running for re-election. It doesn't matter if God is popular or not. God makes one promise. I will be with you in all of it. God says, I'm not making any campaign promises to you because I'm not running for anything. I am just going to promise you that I am with you in everything, no matter what. Hold on to me, and let's see what can happen. In my first parish assignment, I got to know this couple that I just loved. They were in midlife. They were in a second marriage for both of them, and both of them had a rough first marriage, so they really appreciated this second marriage and what it was bringing to their lives. And they built this idyllic log cabin at the summit of a Catskill mountain overlooking a valley. It was, it was just beautiful. And, and they were having this, this just beautiful second chapter of life together. They had had a cozy night in the house, and the next day they were doing tasks. And the husband was outside in the yard doing stuff, and the wife was cleaning out the ashes from the fireplace from the night before. And she went outside to put them in the ash bin. And they were, they were dead, but, but it was real windy outside. And as soon as she went outside, she thought, I don't, I don't want to go out in this wind. It's going to blow the ashes all over, and then I'll have to sweep them up. But you probably already have a feeling in your stomach that tells you that's not what happened. The wind blew whatever life was left in those ashes and then blew the ashes all over the house. And about 70 small fires started all at once, all over their dream house, their log cabin that they designed and built. They were standing outside, just, just slack-jawed as they watched their house burn like that. They said the fire was so hot that the sap inside of their log cabin logs exploded and caught all the trees on fire. It was like Armageddon in their yard. And the only thing they had was the clothes on their back. They lived in a shelter for several weeks. Then they wound up getting temporary housing while they worked through all the insurance issues. And then they got to work on clearing the land and building a new house. And they loved the house they had, so they used the same plans. And while they were working on the foundation, a woman drove up and said, I want you to know that I came to your yard sale last year, and I just loved your house, and I just loved the feel of everything. And she said, and when I heard about your fire, I was just so sad. I was so devastated for you. And she said, I found that the past few nights, I can't sleep. I've been tossing and turning, and I know it's because the hope chest that I bought at your yard sale does not belong to me. I know that God wants you to have it back. And so she went to her trunk and she said, here, I want you to have this and then I'll be able to sleep again. And I got to go to dinner in their house, their log cabin house that was on the same spot as the old one, built the exact same way. And there was the hope chest. 
that's not too big a problem for God. God does not say, now what am I going, what am I going to do? What, wh- how do I work with this? God never has to say that. And God has not promised that we're going to avoid Good Friday. But God has said, I will get you to Easter if you stick with me. I have a friend who has a phrase she uses to remember this lesson. She said, whenever I start trying to tell God about how big my problems are, she said, I stop and I tell my problems how big God is. Don't tell God how big your problems are. God's not scared of that. God's not like, ooh, I hadn't heard about that one. What are we going to do now? Never. We don't need to tell God about how big our problems are. We can tell our problems. You have no idea what you're up against. The power of God can obliterate you like that. Just you wait. So what is, what is the problem that you have no solution to right now? What's the grief that you cannot imagine ever being able to heal from? What's the anger or the hurt that you just cannot imagine forgiving? I'll, I'll never be able to look at that person again. What's the treasure in your life that's been lost that, that you don't know how you'll ever get back? What is an outcome that you're dreading that you can't imagine surviving? The goal for all of us is to try to take the lesson of Easter and, and bring it inside of us so that we can use it the next time we face something that feels too big for God to handle. That's the task right now for all of us heartbroken over the College of St. Rose closing. We have, to, we have to allow that Good Friday to be introduced to the power of God and see what God can do with it. On Easter morning in 2018, I realized why I had felt a little strange during the Easter vigil the night before. It's because I woke up on Easter morning with a stomach bug. And I was the only priest for two parishes. And there were three Easter morning masses and hundreds and hundreds of people were coming, standing room only. And I looked up toward heaven and I was like, all right, God, this is impossible. And God said, why don't you bring a wastebasket and put it right next to you at the altar? (laughs) And then we'll have a good story to talk about when you get to heaven someday. Isn't that how it works? We're going to need something to talk about when we get to heaven. So that's why we're going to keep working our way through all of this stuff and allow God to do what God does best, to bring glory to what seems hopeless. Let's not tell God all about our problems. Let's tell our problems just how powerful God is.